An industrial giant just crashed the smart home party and they're letting you choose your weapon. Wago's eight new matter certified devices come in pairs, Wi-Fi or thread for every single model. No forced ecosystem, no protocol lock-in. Just pick what works for your setup and move on. Now, before we dive into what makes this interesting, let's talk about who Wago actually is, because that context matters here. Behind your wall switches, hidden in junction boxes, there's wiring that's been the same for decades. And if you've ever watched an electrician work, you've probably seen those orange and gray lever nut connectors. Those are Wago 221 series connectors. They've been the gold standard since 1951. Push the lever, insert the wire, release. No twisting, no wire nuts, no failures. Electricians trust them because they simply don't fail. So when a company with that kind of industrial pedigree announces smart home devices, it's worth paying attention. They're not coming from the world of cheap Wi-Fi gadgets. They're coming from the world where reliability isn't optional. But here's what makes this launch different from every other Matter announcement we've seen. Most brands pick a protocol and commit. Shelly built their empire on Wi-Fi. Eve went all in on Thread. Everyone else is picking sides in this ongoing debate. Wago looked at that debate and said, why choose? Every single one of their eight certified devices comes in both versions. Want Wi-Fi because your router's solid and you don't want another hub? Same device, Wi-Fi radio. Want Thread because you're building a mesh network that doesn't depend on your router? Same device, Thread radio. This dual protocol strategy signals something important about where Matter's actually heading, but we'll get to that in a minute. First, let's talk about the actual problem these devices solve. You want smart lighting without replacing every bulb or switch? Maybe you've got nice dimmable LEDs you just installed. Maybe you're in a rental and can't replace fixtures. Whatever the reason, you need control without ripping everything out. The typical solution is a retrofit relay. A small module that sits behind your existing switch and intercepts the power. Shelly absolutely dominates this market right now. Their 1PM Mini Gen 4 sells for around $20, fits in impossibly tight spaces and works with Matter over Wi-Fi. For most DIY installations, it's reliable enough. But here's the thing about reliable enough. That phrase means something very different to a homeowner than it does to a professional electrician staking their reputation on an installation. And that's exactly where Wago is positioning these devices. So what exactly did they certify? Let's walk through the lineup. First up, the Home Relay 6A. 6 amps is perfect for LED lighting circuits. Modern LEDs draw so little power that you can control dozens of bulbs with a 6 amp relay. We're talking ceiling lights, bathroom fans, individual wall lights. The 6A rating also suggests these are compact modules probably sized to compete with Shelly's mini-series and fit behind crowded switch boxes. Moving up, there's the Home Relay 16 amps. Now we're talking about serious loads. Wall outlets, electric heaters, washing machines, kitchen appliances. This is the workhorse relay for controlling high power devices where you absolutely can't trust cheap components. Because when you're switching 16 amps, failure isn't just annoying, it's potentially dangerous. Then we've got the home dimmer. And this is where things get interesting because dimmers are genuinely tricky. They need to handle variable loads, work with different bulb types, maintain smooth dimming curves, and not cause flickering or that annoying electronic buzzing. Cheap dimmers fail at this constantly. You've probably experienced it. Lights that buzz at certain dim levels or flicker when you try to go below 20% brightness. Wago's industrial experience with power control should translate really well here. They understand power electronics at a level most consumer brands don't. Finally, there's the home blind controller. Motorized blinds need precise control and safety features. If something obstructs the blind, the motor needs to stop immediately, not slow down, stop. Most consumer blind controllers get this wrong and damage blinds or worse, keep pushing until something breaks. Again, Wago's background in industrial controls suggests they'll handle the safety logic properly. Now remember that each of these four device types comes in both Wi-Fi and Thread versions. That's what gets us to eight total certified devices. But here's where the protocol choice actually matters for end users. The Wi-Fi versions connect directly to your router. No hub required, no additional hardware purchases, no learning curve about Thread border routers. You install the device, 
Scan the Matter QR code with your phone and you're controlling it through Apple Home, Google Home, or Home Assistant within minutes. It's the path of least resistance, which is exactly why Wi-Fi dominates consumer smart home devices right now. On the other hand, the thread versions create a mesh network. Each device talks to nearby thread devices, creating multiple paths for signals to travel. If one device fails or loses signal, the mesh automatically routes around it. It's self-healing, self-organizing. And critically, it doesn't depend on your Wi-Fi router's performance or configuration. But there's a catch. Thread requires a border router. You need an Apple TV 4K, HomePod Mini, Google Nest Hub, or dedicated Thread hardware to bridge the Thread network to your home network. That's an extra $40 to $80, plus another device to set up and manage. So why would Wego offer both versions instead of just picking the protocol that seems to be winning? Because the market fundamentally can't agree on which protocol actually wins. The Wi-Fi camp points to universal router coverage, no additional hubs, and the fact that everyone already understands how Wi-Fi works. The thread believers emphasize lower power consumption, more reliable mesh networking, and not flooding your router with IoT devices. Both sides have completely valid points, and neither side is clearly winning yet. Wego's essentially saying, we don't care about the protocol wars. Pick what works for your specific installation. That's either brilliant market positioning or expensive product line complexity that'll hurt their margins. Probably both. Which brings us to the elephant in the room. Wego hasn't announced pricing. They haven't listed these products anywhere public. The MATA certification database confirms these devices exist and passed certification. But there's no product pages on Wego's website, no spec sheets, no availability dates, nothing. This creates a massive unknown that changes everything about how to evaluate this launch. If Wego prices like industrial equipment, which is their traditional market, we could be looking at $40 to $60 per relay. At that price point, they're firmly in professional installer territory. Electricians will pay premium prices for reliability they can stake their reputation on. But DIY homeowners will stick with Shelly's $20 modules that work perfectly fine for most use cases. On the other hand, if Wago decides to price competitively with consumer brands, maybe $25 to $30 per device, they could genuinely shake up the entire retrofit market. Industrial build quality at near consumer prices would force everyone else to raise their game. But here's why I suspect pricing will land closer to the premium end. Wago's primary customers have always been electrical contractors and industrial clients. These are people who need equipment that meets strict electrical codes, carries proper safety certifications, and will still be working reliably five years from installation. They don't need to be the cheapest option on Amazon. They need to be the most reliable option their customers can specify. That's a fundamentally different value proposition than competing on price with consumer electronics. So what actually makes Wego's approach different beyond the dual protocol flexibility? Let's start with build quality and certifications. Wego products typically carry UL listing, CE marking, and meet industrial temperature and environmental ratings. For professional installations, especially in commercial buildings or multifamily housing, these certifications aren't nice to have. They're literally required by insurance companies and building codes. Consumer brands often skip these expensive certification processes because individual homeowners rarely check for them. But professional installers absolutely do. Second major difference is power source architecture. Wago's industrial background strongly suggests these will be hardwired mains power solutions, meaning they draw power directly from your electrical system. No batteries to replace every year, no charging concerns, no low battery notifications interrupting your morning. The trade-off is you need a neutral wire at every switch location. And older homes, particularly those built before the 1980s, often lack neutral wires in their switch boxes. That can be a deal breaker for retrofit installations without rewiring. The third big unknown is form factor. Wago completely dominates the DIN rail equipment market. That's the standardized mounting system you see in electrical panels, where components snap onto metal rails. Professional installations love panel mounting because everything's centralized, easily accessible, and simple to service or replace. But the home branding in these product names, plus the fact that they're clearly competing with Shelly's behind the switch modules, suggests Wago might be offering puck-style form factors too. 
Those are the small disc-shaped modules that fit in the space behind your existing switches. We simply won't know until Wego actually announces these products with real specifications. Which brings us to who should actually care about this launch. Professional electricians working on new construction or major renovations should absolutely be watching this space. A matter solution with industrial grade reliability, proper certifications and dual protocol options solves real problems in professional installations. You can offer clients Wi-Fi for simplicity and lower cost, or Thread for advanced mesh networking, all while using the same product family either way. That simplifies your inventory, your training, and your support burden. DIY smart home enthusiasts might find Wego interesting, but it really depends on that unknown pricing. If these devices cost double what Shelly charges, most DIY users will stick with the proven budget options that work perfectly well. Unless you're specifically prioritizing build quality and longevity over upfront cost. Thread believers finally have a professional grade option to point to. Most thread devices available today are consumer electronics, like smart bulbs, sensors, things like that. Wago offering thread versions of industrial quality relays and controllers validates the protocol for serious professional installations. And safety conscious homeowners who prioritize reliability over features have a new brand worth considering. If you're the type of person who researches electrical certifications, reads installation manuals cover to cover, and wants devices that won't fail in five years, Wago's pedigree absolutely matters. But casual smart home users should probably wait and see. The combination of unknown pricing, zero public product information, and clear professional positioning suggests these aren't designed to compete with $20 consumer modules. Now let's talk honestly about the limitations and unknowns here. First and most obvious, there's a complete information blackout. The Matter certification happened. The devices are real, but Wago hasn't publicly listed them anywhere. No pricing, no detailed specifications, no availability timeline, no distribution channel announcements. This could mean they're targeting a Q1 or Q2 2026 retail launch and just haven't done the marketing push yet. Or it could mean these are professional channel only products that will never actually hit consumer retail stores. We legitimately don't know. Second limitation is the cost of the dual protocol approach. Offering two versions of every single device means Wago's carrying more products in inventory, more manufacturing complexity, and higher development costs across the board. That expense has to go somewhere. Either it gets passed directly to customers through higher device prices, or Wago absorbs it as a market entry cost to establish their position. Given their traditional margins in industrial equipment, absorbing those costs might not be realistic. Third major limitation is distribution channels. Shelly has distribution completely locked down at this point. You can buy their products on Amazon, direct from their website, through major electrical distributors, from smart home specialty retailers. They're everywhere. Wego would need to build similar consumer distribution infrastructure, which really isn't their traditional strength. They're used to selling through professional electrical supply houses to contractors and industrial buyers. Not direct to consumers. Changing that channel strategy takes time, investment, and completely different marketing approaches. The competitive landscape matters here too. Shelly's not standing still waiting for Wago to catch up. Their Gen 4 line just launched this month with full multi-protocol support. Matter over Wi-Fi, Zigbee, and Bluetooth all in the same device. They haven't added thread yet, but the ESP32C6 chipset they're using supports it in hardware. A software update could enable thread support later. And Shelly's pricing remains incredibly aggressive. $20 for a relay with power monitoring and matter support is genuinely hard to beat. Then there's Sunoff in the budget tier. Their Mini R4M with matter over Wi-Fi cells for $13. Sure, it's not industrial grade quality, but for the average homeowner, it works perfectly fine for controlling lights and outlets. Wago needs to clearly differentiate on reliability and professional certifications. They can't compete purely on price against these established consumer brands. There's also the Matter specification version to consider. These devices appear to be certified under current Matter specifications. Matter 1.4 launched back in November with enhanced multi-admin features and better interoperability. By the time Wago's products actually ship to customers, the Matter specification will have continued evolving. Now, that's not necessarily a problem because Matter devices can receive firmware updates. 
but it does mean Wego's launch timing matters significantly for competitive positioning. Every month of delay gives competitors more time to improve their own offerings. So here's what we're actively watching for. First, actual product announcements with real specifications. Load ratings, physical dimensions, installation requirements, compatibility lists. Second, the pricing strategy. Will Wego price these as premium industrial equipment or will they attempt to compete directly with consumer electronics pricing? Third, distribution channel decisions. Are we talking professional only availability through electrical distributors or will they pursue consumer retail channels like Amazon? And fourth, form factor confirmation. Will we see traditional DIN rail modules only or will there be puck style modules for behind the switch installation or both? The bigger picture here goes beyond just Wago's product launch. When an established industrial component manufacturer like Wago enters the consumer smart home market with dual protocol Matter offerings, it signals something important about Matter's evolution. Matter isn't just consumer electronics gadgets anymore. It's becoming genuine infrastructure. Professional installers need reliable options that meet electrical codes, carry proper safety certifications, and will survive years of daily use. Consumer brands often can't justify the certification costs and quality standards at $20 price points. The margins simply aren't there. Wago's entry potentially creates a distinct professional tier within the Matter ecosystem. And their dual protocol strategy acknowledges something the rest of the industry keeps trying to ignore. Both Wi-Fi and Thread have completely legitimate use cases. Neither one is objectively better in all scenarios. Instead of forcing everyone to pick sides in an ongoing protocol war, Wego's letting the installer or homeowner make that decision based on their specific needs and infrastructure. For the broader smart home industry, this could push quality standards upward across the board. If professional installers start routinely specifying industrial grade matter devices for their projects, it creates pressure on consumer brands to improve their reliability and certifications. The race to the bottom on pricing might actually slow down if enough customers start valuing build quality and longevity. Whether that actually happens depends entirely on Wago's execution and final pricing decisions. So here's the bottom line on all of this. Wago's eight Matter certified devices represent a potentially significant shift in how we think about smart home infrastructure. The dual Wi-Fi and thread strategy gives customers actual choice instead of forcing a single protocol. Their industrial pedigree brings a level of reliability and certification that consumer brands often can't match. But without real pricing, detailed specifications, or any availability timeline, these products are still essentially vaporware. If you're planning a professional smart home installation sometime in 2026, definitely ask your electrician to check on Wago's availability and pricing when it becomes available. If you're doing DIY retrofits right now and need devices today, Shelly and Sunoff offer proven performance at known prices that you can order immediately. We'll absolutely update with a full review when Wago actually launches these products with real specifications and pricing. For right now, the Matter certification confirms they're coming. But all the details that actually matter for making purchasing decisions are still missing. And if you're a professional installer watching this, drop a comment and let us know. Would having dual protocol matter devices from an industrial brand actually change your approach to smart home projects? We're genuinely curious to hear from people doing this.